Welcome back. Ergo mechanical keyboards. They're more popular than ever and Keychron is hopping on that trend. They're releasing the Q8, an Alice style layout keyboard. It's part of their more premium Q line of keyboards, so it's fully loaded with features, but now with a more ergonomic layout. This layout is slowly starting to appear in more budget keyboards, as it was reserved to high-end group by units not so long ago. And it's a layout I started using very recently, as I received my Maja V2 from KBD fans, and I really like it. I wasn't sure about it, and buying a pretty expensive group by keyboard with an unknown layout was a bit scary. But all in all, I think it's great, and if you're bored of the usual layouts we have these days, it's definitely worth trying. Anyway, let's have a closer look and see if the Q8 specifically is worth considering. Okay, so for the unboxing, I posted a reel on my Instagram of the unboxing experience, as well as some mods to improve the sound, so definitely check it out. But in short, you get a USB cable and replacement keycaps for Mac and Windows. But looking at the board itself, we have the same aesthetic as usual with Q-series keyboards, but with an Alice layout. The case has a straight edge at the top and the USB-C port is located in the middle next to the Windows and Mac switch. The switch allows you to alternate between two VL layers, which is very cool. The finish is anodized aluminum and looks good, although not as smooth as more premium keyboards. This keyboard is also offered in a knob version, feels pretty nice, and it can be remapped to whatever you want. To open it up, there's 8 screws under, and removing the bottom section of the case reveals the PCB, which comes with a factory tape mod. First time I see something like this. The case has no foam in it, nor any form of plate foam as we'll see in a bit, and this results in a hollow sound. However, it does allow the gaskets to work freely in a very even way. The two case sections also have silicone tabs in between so that it's not metal on metal. Disconnecting the daughter board lets you take out the PCB assembly, and here we can see that the board has an additional switch socket, which is hidden by the case. Not sure why we have this. The factory tape mod must be removed to disassemble the plate and PCB assembly, but it's quite sticky and goes back on with no issues. Stock switches were Gateron G Pro Reds, and these are pretty good for included switches, although a couple of them had a pinging sound for some reason. In all cases, they're hot swap in a south facing config, so you can replace them with something else you prefer. I replaced the stabs with C3 stabs, which aren't that great but still an upgrade, and I also replaced the switches with Huskies from Kinetic Labs. It did improve the sound a bit, but was still quite hollow, so I added a thick piece of case foam which cancelled any gasket action, but did kill the hollowness. I'm thinking a thinner and less dense foam piece might do the trick here. The stock keycaps are pretty good, although the legends aren't always super precise, you still get double shot PBT keycaps and an OSA profile and they match pretty well with the aesthetic of the keyboard. I did however replace them with this GMK Serenity set. The layout, although unconventional, is easier to work with than some other Alice keyboards. You'll need 2.25 and 2.75 unit spacebars, which are relatively common two B keys, a 1.75 right shift key, and three one unit modifiers for around the space bars. Everything else is standard, and this is mostly why this compact GMK set had everything I needed to cover this layout. Getting used to it is another story. I found that for typing, if your technique ain't complete garbage, it's not too hard to get used to. I especially like to map the middle modifiers to Command on Mac or Control on Windows. This location is super convenient, compared to needing to sort of invert my thumb for common keyboard shortcuts. On the other hand, it takes longer to adjust for gaming, as I feel it's highly tied to muscle memory, and all keys are shifted a bit compared to a traditional layout, so it's quite an adjustment here. What helped for me was to have the keyboard angled to the left, which results in the SDF section to be mostly straight, and this felt like a relatively similar hand placement to a standard layout. Alright, let's have a little sound test comparing the different mods I tried with the Q8. It's worth noting that the stock tape mod uses a stiffer paper material than painter's tape, and thus it only touches the hot swap sockets and not the PCB, so I wonder how effective it is.
As with other Q keyboards from Keychron, the Q8 comes with QMK and VIA support, which is amazing. You can easily remap keys as you want. Another great perk of this keyboard is that the physical switch alternates between the first two layers, so you can have two completely different configs with different mod layers accessible, and that's brilliant. Especially with an Alice layout, customizability is super important, I think, as the bottom row can likely be whatever you want. Maybe you want two actual space bars, or maybe you want something else completely. So here, VIA support is a welcome addition. As usual with VIA support, you can map RGB controls to the layer of your choice, and here you get a bunch of stock animations, as well as fixed modes, and you can select the hue, brightness, and animation speed. The LEDs are pretty bright and colorful. Nothing really to complain here for all of you RGB lovers. So this is cool and all, but is it worth the money? Prices are currently $175 for the barebone and $195 for the pre-built. There's only a couple options with an Alice layout today, so it's a bit easier to compare against one another. I'll compare it against two other options that I own, where the price almost doubles every time you move up. At almost half the price of the Q8, the Akko ACR Pro Alice Plus comes pre-built with extra keycaps for only $130. There's even a barebone version at $100. It features an acrylic case, a gasket mount design, plate foam, a polycarb plate, and better quality stock keycaps for the pre-built version. Also, it sounds pretty good stock. On the other hand, it's not VIA compatible, you are limited to ACO software for customizability, it's not an aluminum case if you care about that, and these switches are north facing so there might be interference with cherry profile keycaps. At double the price of the Q8, there's the Maja V2, which is a group by keyboard, I had to wait 6 months to receive it. My configuration was 375 and it's now restocking at 395 and that's for a barebone keyboard. The finish is better, it comes with PVD brass and stainless weights, plate and case foam, as well as a walnut wrist rest. It weights a ton, feels super premium, and sounds really good as is with no further mods. It also supports VIA, but comes with a pretty odd bottom row layout, which usually requires buying more expensive keycap sets or getting the additional spacebar kit. I think the Akko is overall the best value with everything that's included and its stock sound. However, the lack of VIA support is very limiting, which makes the Q8 the next best option. As for the Maja V2, it's such a big jump in price that you really need to care deeply about the added premium features of the board or other minor details you get with it, as otherwise it doesn't feel like it's worth the price. All in all, I think the Q8 is a solid option for anyone willing to try out the Alice layout. It's super customizable, both from a software and hardware perspective, and I think offers a great value for the price. All right, that's it for today. Let me know down below what you think about the Q8. I'm curious to see if people are actually into Alice style boards or if it's just a trend that'll pass. Make sure you subscribe for more desk setup and mechanical keyboard content, and I'll see you in the next video.